Hi friends, uh, welcome to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, in this uh, episode, uh, I wanted to talk about hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids are part of normal build of human being, but can be a problem. So I thought we'd kind of explore this uh, area carefully. So the anal canal is a area that right adjacent to the opening of the rectum. So the anal canal is about 2.5 to 4 centimeters long. There's different types of lining there. One is lining of the skin, there's transition lining, and then there's lining of what we call glandular epithelium. There's a thing called dentate line, and I'll show you a photograph of that or a slide of that, which helps us transition what's internal and what's external. So within this anal canal, there's normal vascular structures that are called hemorrhoids. And you can think about this as a gasket lining an opening to keep things together. So hemorrhoids or hemorrhoidal structure is a part of the normal vascular build. They actually then drain into a superior, middle and inferior hemorrhoidal vein that drain into the inferior vena cava and then the blood actually then travels to the heart. So these are venous structures. Now internal and external hemorrhoids communicate with each other. So it's not that they are separate. And like we talked about, internal is above the dentate line. And you can see the lining there of the dentate line, which is the transition zone between the skin that's going into the anal canal and the internal lining. So anything above the dentate line is called internal. And there's actually three columns of that. There's a, when, in, when you look at them, there's a left lateral, a posterior, and a right anterior. And these correspond to branches of the middle and superior hemorrhoidal vein. So we talked about those three veins. The internal ones, uh, the last two especially, correspond to the middle and superior hemorrhoidal vein. Now, internal hemorrhoids are graded as one, two, and three. Grade one is when they start becoming bigger. They're visualized when you put a small scope in and they may bulge into the lumen but they don't come below that dentate line. So going back again, that dentate line is the line that's transitioned between the internal and external in the, uh, in the uh, anal canal. Grade two hemorrhoids can prolapse out of the anal canal with when, you, when one is pooping or with straining, but they go back in. And grade three come out of the anal canal uh, with defecation and straining and actually require manual reduction. Some of us, uh, some of uh, our patients will have that where they say, hey, I have feel something coming out and I have to push it back in. And lastly, then there's a grade four where the hemorrhoids are coming out, but it's impossible to push them back in and sometimes they can get uh, strangulated. External hemorrhoids are below the dentate line and sometimes one can have both in terms of an internal and external hemorrhoidal component. So uh, patients tell us, hey, sometimes I have something that's coming out. Uh, I don't know what it is. And it may or may not be hemorrhoids too. It may be other things, but we'll, we'll get to that. But let's say we are now dealing with symptomatic hemorrhoids. These symptomatic hemorrhoids can, there are certain things that can make these hemorrhoids worse. One is advancing age diarrhea, sometimes pregnancy because the gravid uterus can press on those veins inside and cause engorgement, pelvic tumors, prolonged sitting or straining, which is can be with constipation or we have talked about defecation disorders before. And of course, if you have these vascular or blood structures and one is on blood thinner, such as Eliquis or Zeralto or Plavix, it makes the symptoms worse. Now, the Symptoms can be uh, from many different reasons. Sometimes the lining of that hemorrhoidal area can get irritated and there's more secretion of mucus. Sometimes it's because of the pressure from the hemorrhoids or sometimes the anal canal can close if the hemorrhoids prolapse out and that can cause leakage. So patients complain about a variety of things which can be some itching, Sometimes those hemorrhoids can get clotted off and it can get painful. 
most times that resolves occasionally may require incision sometimes there's uh, uh, as i said fecal soilage there can be bleeding and uh, uh, sometimes those vascular structures clot off and that's what's called thrombosis and i have a photograph of a thrombo you know a prolapsed uh, um, to some degree there's some thrombosis too in this photograph uh, of the hemorrhoids now there's other things that can be confused so don't assume that if you feel something in the anal area obviously it's a difficult area to self examine about 50% of the time when patients say i think i have a hemorrhoid i listen to it but i also want to examine it myself because all that we think is hemorrhoids are may not be hemorrhoids sometimes it can be a fistula sometimes in patients who have inflammatory bowel disease they can be an abscess i have a photograph of that abscess is a pus collection sometimes they can be a fissure a fissure is a cut that's an entirely different uh, aspect of what's happening here there's also what we call a fistula which is a connection from the outside from the inside this can happen sometimes spontaneously sometimes it can happen with crohn's disease so in other words there's a connection that develops from the inside to the outside so we talked about fissures i showed a photograph we talked about fistula we talked about abscesses we talked about there can be sometimes anal cancer that can develop in that area so if you're feeling a bump and it's painful don't assume that anything you feel in that anal area is all hemorrhoids it could be that's the commonest but it could be other things and sometimes the mucosa from the rectum can prolapse out or the rectum can prolapse out so there's kind of condition called rectal prolapse so there's a variety of things that can happen with this condition the point that i want to make is that uh, you know don't assume that it's all hemorrhoids you know seek attention if you're feeling consistently if you're seeing blood if you're seeing leakage some of these we can kind of try to troubleshoot and there's some solutions so what are solutions sometimes when there's thrombosis in other words a clot forms and you you know you've been having some symptoms and suddenly that it's painful you there's a bump there it can look like a clot that forms that's thrombosis and for that it's pain control sometimes you got to kind of uh make a cut or try to scoop the clot out if it's external hemorrhoids sometimes surgery is an option to strip those hemorrhoids called external hemorrhoidectomy and there's internal hemorrhoidectomy for internal hemorrhoids however there's two other things that we do here for hemorrhoids that includes infrared coagulation of the hemorrhoids and there's a procedure called doppler guided transanal hemorrhoidal dearterialization that's not something we do but we also do a thing called banding of the hemorrhoids so commonly what we do here is infrared coagulation so in other words we use heat a heat probe and then cauterize these hemorrhoids and those hemorrhoids shrink or we can take a band and it's like pulling those hemorrhoids up putting a band around them and that sort of strangulates them and after a while the that superficial tissue dies off and falls off so that's called banding I have a little slide on the comparison of the different hemorrhoidal hemorrhoidectomy techniques and you know you will see on this uh, you know there's also sort of a, a a comparative aspect of banding versus infrared coagulation but these are the basic options so to summarize don't assume that it's hemorrhoids i think if there is bleeding if there's pain if there's a new bump there are many other things of course as we talked about so a good exam is important by a trained eye keeping the stool soft can be helpful uh, in other words trying to get to 25 grams of fiber or more per day that will keep the stool soft and prevent straining and some of these hemorrhoid related problems so you can actually head that off the other thing that we can do is once if there is bleeding or if you see something a good exam followed by possibly a colonoscopy or a flexible sigmoidoscopy or shorter scope may be helpful and then if we diagnose and they fall into one of these categories and they have associated symptoms we can do uh, whether it be a surgical option or whether it be an endoscopic or office option in terms of infrared coagulation or banding or surgery we'd have to discuss or watchful waiting it falls into one of these groups sometimes we use medicines like anusol that will uh, calm those inflammation down and that can be of some help so thank you for tuning in uh feel free to uh, send some questions uh and we'll continue to kind of discuss and thank you for encouraging me to continue to do these uh, videos